Eric? Well, as President Trump prepares for his first overseas trip later this week, with Israel and Saudi Arabia among the stops, a major worry that will be raised in both nations is the continuing threat from Iran. In our exclusive interview, one prominent Iranian, the exiled prince Reza Pahlavi, predicts the regime in Tehran, he says, will collapse just like the Soviet Union after the fall of the Berlin Wall and the liberation of Eastern Europe. He told me that in Iran, the power is with the people. The regime has been given enough chance to come clean. It hasn't for good reason. And therefore, I say, forget about this regime. Think about the people. He is the oldest son of the Shah of Iran, the monarch who once ruled his nation. Now, it's Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi is fighting for the soul of Iran. During his father's time, Tehran was a reliable ally, and America was not the great Satan, as the theocratic regime in Tehran now calls us. The monarchy, led by Pahlavi's father, was overthrown by the 1979 Islamic Revolution of Ayatollah Khomeini, and Pahlavi's family fled the country. Now, he wants the Iranian people to rise up against the regime and establish a parliamentary monarchy based on democratic values, freedom, and human rights. What I'm calling upon is a process of civil disobedience, which is a method, method of change. How? By bringing domestic pressure on the system. If enough people refuse to cooperate, like Indians did in India during the British uh, uh, time, when they uh, can paralyze the system by massive sustained labor strikes across the nation, that's not people shooting bullets in the streets. So what you're calling for is a, a revolution from within. I think the mechanism of change can be by nonviolent civil disobedience, provided that it is nurtured and cared for. History is full of such examples. Nelson Mandela was rotting in his cell in South Africa while half of the world was doing business with the apartheid regime until a point where people in the world said, basta, enough. It is no longer acceptable. And how does that happen when it comes to your country? Well, I think that the American people, as far as America is concerned, the Europeans, the people in the region, the more they hear about what the Iranian people demand, not what the regime wants, what the Iranian people demand, they will in turn tell their would-be congressmen or senator decision makers, what are you waiting for? These people are like us. They don't want to come here and destroy us or blow us to pieces or wipe a country from the map. They want to be like us. He says there are spontaneous protests and unrest against the regime that could spread with world support, unlike eight years ago. Back in 2009, when the people took to the streets, the Green Revolution, do you think the West and President Obama could have done more? Well, if the people on the streets are holding up slogans, in English or in French, they're not practicing their linguistic skills, they're sending you a clear message. They were chanting on the streets during the Green Movement, Obama, Obama, Yaba Una, Yaba Ma, which in Farsi means either you're with them or with us. Make a choice. I think the choice was not to hit the call of the people. The focus has been too much on the regime in your view. Yeah. Do you also think that too much has been given to the regime in the past? Well, every time the regime has its back to the wall, somehow they were thrown a life <laughs> vest and, and, and were able to basically catch their second wind, uh, as we say here. For example? Case in point, uh, the nuclear deal. That deal is supposed to stop Iran from building a nuclear bomb. But critics charge it has only enriched the regime to support terrorism and simply delays Tehran's inevitable nuclear program. Pahlavi has dedicated his life to opposing the regime and its extremism. You have spent decades fighting this. One would think that you'd be pessimistic, that you would not have hope. But I, I hear you optimistic and that you have hope. I always have hope. You know what? Because it's the nature of humans. And there's one common point in every person anywhere on the planet, regardless of their nationality, religious, re religion or, or ethnicity, and I think it's a, it's a tree of three obvious factors. One is freedom and the ability to speak your mind and believe in what you want. The other one is an opportunity to participate in whatever system that is governing your country. And last but certainly not the least, dignity, human dignity. And when they deprive you as a human being for any of these, will you give up? 
and not stand up and fight, it's a historical conclusion that these kind of regimes simply cannot survive. It's just a matter of time. The only question is how soon and at what cost. Do you feel in your heart that one day this regime will fall? Absolutely. There's no question about it. Well, have some have faulted the Shah's rule and U.S. policy at the time for creating the conditions that led to the Islamic Revolution, the prince says in this day and age a secular democratic state can be established. And he says he has faith, especially in the young Iranians who are connected to social media and the Internet. And in a letter to President Trump, he asked for Americans' help, saying, quote, to support the brave people of Iran in their quest for justice. And by the way, you know, the Iranian presidential election will be held there next Friday. The prince says its results will not change the regime's behavior.